Hello my schoolers, this is my school channel and my name is Abiola. For this video lesson, we are going to be tackling the Jam CBT past question for the subject Physics, the year 2009. Do not go anywhere, stay with us because we will be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel. For this video lesson, we are going to provide solution for questions 18 to 33. So let's start with question 18. Metal cables are used as telephone wires because why? Okay, so at first, let's look through the options provided, right? So we have option A, they are cheap. Okay, so for some presentations, okay, that I've seen, um, I found out that copper, right? Because copper is used when it comes to um, cables for telephone wires, okay? Copper is seen as um, quite expensive, so I can discard this option. Okay, they are sourced locally. The speed of sound in them is very low. Option D, the speed of sound in them is very high. Okay, so if I'm going to make a comparison, or make comparison between um, the speed of sound in air, then compared to metals, okay? It is quite higher, far higher, or well distinguished compared to what you have in here, okay? So, I can say metal cables are used as telephone wires, talking about copper now, okay? Because the speed of sound in them is very high when you compare them to air. So, option D is the right option. Question 19. Musical instruments playing the same notes, same pitch, same loudness, okay? So, can be distinguished from one another owing to the differences in their quality. You know, quality is actually one thing you use to distinguish between musical instruments, even though they are playing on the same notes. And you know, quality is well dependent on the fundamental frequency, you know, the mix or the blend of fundamental frequency and overtones. So the correct option here is option A for quality. 20. We have moon, sun, street light, stars. Which of these are natural sources of light? So natural sources. The sun and the stars okay so the moon the earth you know they actually get their light from the sun okay so um, street light that's an artificial source of light okay so the correct combination okay should include the sun and the stars so where do we have i high and high v that is presented or packaged in option d so option d has the right combo 21 an object is placed 5 cm from the pole of a concave mirror. If the focal length of the mirror is 10 cm, what is the image distance? So, we can just use the mirror equation, all right, which you can have as this, 1 over u plus 1 over v equals 1 over l. So, we are looking for v, which is the image distance, right? So, we bring this outside. So, we are going to have 1 over v equals 1 over f minus 1 over u. Okay, so let's substitute the values. So we have 1 over v equals 1 over f. That's our focal length, right? So we have it as 10 centimeter. Object distance, we have it as 5. Okay, so if we decide to find the LCM, that is 10, right? So 10 in 10, that is 1. 1 times 1, I have 1. Minus 5 in 10, that is 2. 2 times 1, I have 2. So basically, that should give me 1 minus 2, that is minus 1 over 10. So I have 1 over V equals minus 1 over 10. So if we cross multiply, so I should have V times minus 1 equals 10 times 1. So next, we can divide both sides by minus 1, right? So I have my V equals 10 times 1. That is 10 over minus 1, and that is minus 10. So with this information, we can tell that the image produced here is actually erect, or you can say upright and virtual. That is 10 centimeters behind 
the mirror. So let's see if we have that presentation. Okay, so 10 centimeters behind the mirror. So that is found in option C. So option C is the right option. 22. Calculate the position of an object placed in front of a convex mirror having focal length of 12 cm such that an image is formed 6 cm away from the mirror. Okay, so for convex lens, no, regardless of the position of the object, what you should have should be the, for the image, you, know, you should have something that is virtual, something that is erect and diminished, smaller compared to the actual object. So we are still going to use the mirror equation, of course. So I should have this right this equals this okay so we are asked to find this all right so we are dealing with a convex lens here so you should know that this should be negative so we have minus 12 okay then for the image as well we should have minus 6 okay remember for your convex lens okay so let's work with these values provided so i should have my formula now should be 1 over u equals 1 over f right minus 1 over v so i should have 1 over u equals 1 over f that is 1 over minus 12 i can say minus 1 over 12 right then i have this minus sign into brackets i have v as minus 6 so i can still say minus 1 over 6 this minus belongs to the 6 here right so i should have my 1 over u equals, from this, I have minus 1 over 12. Okay, so minus times minus, I have plus. So plus 1 over 6. So looking at the LCM, that is 12. 12 in 12, that is 1. 1 times minus 1, I have minus 1. Then 6, yeah, that is 2. 2 times 1, I have plus 2. So minus 1 plus 2, you see the same thing as saying 2 minus 1. All right, that's still 1. So I have 1 over 12. So I have 1 over u, right, equals 1 over 12. What do I do? I cross multiply. So this to this. So I have u times 1 equals 12 times 1. That is u equals 12 centimeter. So this is what we have, 12 centimeter. So let's see if we have 12 centimeter. All right. Very well, we can find that in option C. So option C is the right option. 23. If the refractive index of crown glass is 1.51, its critical angle is what? So we can just use this simple formula, okay? Refractive index equals, equals 1 over the sine, okay, regarding the critical angle. Okay, this is what I mean. So refractive index, I can use something that looks like this, like n, all right, 1 over this. So this time around, we are asked to find this. So what do we do? We first cross multiply. So I have sine c, right, times the refractive index right equals one so we are looking for this so i have to divide both sides by n so i have sine c right equals one over n right okay so that's actually sine c equals one over refractive index of a crown glass is 1.51 okay so that should give us about 0 0.66225 yeah thereabouts yes yeah. so i have C will now be the inverse, sine inverse, right, of this value here. Okay, so roughly that should bring me to about 41.47. Yeah, so if I want to just um, reduce the amount of values I have here, or items or numbers I have here, I can just bring it to 41.5, okay? Or well, basically 42. Let's just stick with this, let's stick with this, 41.5. So let's see if we have... 41.5 or somewhat around 42 okay, in the options supplied. So I can find that in option C. Option C is the closest to what we have. So option C is a valid option. 24. When light passes through two media X and Y of refraction indices, 1.51 and 1.33 respectively. All right, the speed of light in this media, okay, will do what? Okay, so uh, we should take note of this as the refractive index increases, right, the speed of light should come down, reduce it. So, reduce it. So, if you compare these two, you can see the refractive index here is 1.51, right here is 1.33. I can assume that this is for the crown glass that we used in the previous 
question we solved, right? And this should be for water. So we can see confidently that the speed of light here should be higher in this medium compared to this. So you can just build up this simple network or relation that the lower the refractive index, the higher the speed of light. So which of these options, okay, which of them actually um, gathers or which of them should have this explanation I've put forth, that should be found, that's option D, right? So we have the speed of light in Y, you can see with lower refractive index is higher than what you have in X with higher refractive index. So option D is the correct option. 25. The ability of the human eye to focus objects on the retina is referred to as the power of accommodation. You know, either the object is distant or is close. All right, so the ability of the human eye you know, to adjust, okay, so that it can actually position the object on the image of the object, right? To so focus on the, ob on the object on the retina, that is um, accommodation. All right, so in cases, um, in case we don't have such ability, that is when conditions now set up, okay? Conditions like um, we talk about short-sightedness, long-sightedness, and the like. So the other properties that we are seeing here, interference, diffraction, superposition, reflection, refraction, those are very good properties of sound waves. So the correct option is option C for accommodation. So kindly remember that you can have a Jam CBT experience. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. Right there, you get to download the My School mobile app for your Android devices, or you can check our My School software for your laptops and your computers. So join me as I solve question twenty-six. So which of the following is a secondary color? So when you talk about uh, the types of colors, okay, I can use type or classes of colors. We have the primary, we have the secondary, we have the tertiary, all right. So the primary, they include the blue, the red, and the green, okay. So if you want to get secondary color, that means you are mixing two primary colors together, all right. So an orange is a very good example of secondary colors. Though some presentation will tell you that yellow is a primary color. All right, so, but for the context of the options supplied, okay, so we can see that orange is definitely the odd one out. So, orange is a secondary color. So, option B is the right option. Kindly send us more motivations by hitting the like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and also tap on bell notifications for you to get alerts immediately we upload the next video. 27. If negative charges are induced on an electroscope and a positive charge rod is brought near the cap of the electroscope, the leaves will do what? Alright, so take note of this. When you have um, a negatively charged all right, um, rod that is brought to a negatively charged electroscope, what you should have is that the divergence should increase. Okay, the same thing for positive rod and positive elect electroscope, what you should have is divergence increases, right? So when it comes to a negatively charged rod, okay, brought to a positively charged electroscope or a positively charged electroscope and a negatively charged rod, okay, what you should notice is that the divergence of the leaf, okay, will decrease. Okay, so that should be what you have in option A, close up. So if negative charges are induced on an electroscope and a positively charged rod, so you can see negative positive is brought near the cap of the electroscope. The leaves will do what? The leaves will what? We close up. That tells you that the divergence should decrease. All right, do you see that? So opening for that means it increases. So that's a no-no. So the correct option here is option A, close up. 28, an electrical lamp marked 240 volts, 60 watts is left to operate for an hour. Okay, so how much energy is generated by the filament? Okay, so we're just going to use E equals PT, power times time. Okay, so we have the power supplied, we have 60 watts, right? Okay, times, the time here is given actually an hour, that is 60 minutes. But remember that 60 seconds make one minute, 60 minutes makes one hour. So that's 60 times 60. All right, so we have for the time, 60 times 60, because 
we, do, we should not operate with the how. Let's operate with the second, right? So that will be 60 times 60 times 60. So doing this without a calculator should be easy. Just neglect the zeros, okay, in your sub subconscious mind. Then we just have 6 times 6, that is 36. 36 times 6, that is 216. So how many zeros do I have? One, two, three. So I just bring them down. Okay, so if I want to convert this to probably my standard form, okay, I can just say 2.16 times 10 raised to the power 5. How do I know this? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2.16, okay, times 10 raised to the power 5. So let's see if we have that. Yeah, we have that. Option D, so option D is the valid option. 29. A band of 500 rectangular loops of wire of area 20 cm by 20 cm. Okay, encloses a region of magnetic field which charges from 1.0 to 0.40 within 5 seconds. Okay, so calculate the induced EMF. So I'm just going to use this simple compilation. Okay, so I'll just have it as this. Okay, number of tons that is 500. Right, times the area, okay, we are given in centimeter, that means we have to convert to meters. That will be 20 over 100, right, times 20 over 100. Okay, zero cancel zero, zero cancel zero. So basically I have two times two, I have four. Over 10 times 10, I have 100. So four divided by 100 is zero points. So what I have is 0 0.04. So I should have is 0 0.04. Right, times, you can see what we have there, the charge is from 1.0 to, to 0 0.4. So that is 1.0 minus 0 0.4. So this, I, and one that is 6, then this is 0 0.6 times 0 0.6. Then you divide it by the time. We are talking about the time here. The time here is actually 5 seconds, within 5 seconds. So I have this. So basically, I can do this. Yeah, this is 100, so I have this. So 100 times this, this is actually 4. Okay, so this is actually 4. Or I can say something like this, 100, right, over 1 times, this is 0 0.04, or 4 over 100 as well, right? Then this is 6 over 10. I don't know if it helps, so 0 cancels 0. So I have 4 times 6, that is 24 over 10, 24 over 10, that should, that should give me 2.4 votes for EMF. Of course, we have um, probably, we have more explanation, okay, on this, regarding the formulas and everything we put together, we can check the my school website for that. So I just use this to give us a quick fix, all right, to the question post. All right, so we have 2.40 votes or 2.4 votes. Option D, so option D is the correct option. 30. Cancerous cells can be destroyed by what? Okay, naturally, I would have opted for gamma rays, okay, uh, but based on the selections we have here, so we can of course use hard X rays, hard X rays to destroy cancerous cells. So option C is very, very valid. So option C has the right option. Perhaps you have questions you'd like us to answer. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to take you to the My School website. Right there, you get to interact with our solution providers and your questions will be solved. So join me as I solve question 31. If the decay constant of a radioactive substance is 0 0.231 seconds, okay, per second, okay, the half-life is what? So I can just use this simple formula. T equals 0.693 over the, um, the decay constant. Okay, this is what I mean. All right. Okay, the decay constant here is actually 0 0.231. Okay, for me, I don't need a calculator because I can see that um, this here one, this goes here three. How do I know that? If you check this out, if you multiply it by three, all right? Three times one, I have three. Three times three, I have nine. Three times two, I have six. Three times zero. So with that calculator, I can see that I'm having three as my answer. As we move back to the screen to select the correct option. So we can find that option A. So option A is the right option. 
please know that it has been a very wonderful experience to get you okay sending your contributions to us please we need you to do more of that all you just need to do is to kindly use the comment section below okay indicate the question number and the explanations or steps you like to share 32 a piece of radioactive material contains 10 raised to the power 20 atoms Okay, so if the half-life of the material is 20 seconds, the number of disintegration in the first second is 1. Okay, so if you recall that for our constant, right? Okay, I can write it this way. is actually this. Over what we are given there, okay, as the half-life, which is 20. So if I divide this, I should have somewhat around 0 0.3 yes okay so the next thing we just have to do we have to multiply it by the number of atoms okay it contains so that will be this 0 0.0347 right times 10 raised to power 20. i can still bring this to standard form right i can say this as this is one two three point four seven right times 10 raised to power minus two times 10 raised to power 20. Okay, you can do your shortcuts. Okay, just punch your calculator and you should get your answer. So, but I'm going to do this. All right, so I should have 3.47, right, times 10 raised to the power. 10 raised to the power minus 2 plus, because we have 10, 10, right, plus 20. That should give me 3.47 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 plus 20. That is plus 18. So 3.47 times 10 raised to the power 18. Of course, there are other methods you can use, but I believe this is shorter and easier. Okay, so 3.47 times 10 raised to the power 18 is located. That's option A. So option A is the right option. Question 33. Thermionic emission is the process whereby what happens? Okay, you are talking about emission of electrons or liberation of electrons okay from an electrode or probably metals okay in this case or you have elements here okay due to the virtue of or you can say due to temperature that is heat all right you introduce heat or you can say by the virtue of temperature okay so we have photoelectric um, effect as well or photoelectric emission you know that is due to light when light falls okay so but this time around we're talking about heat so we have this is the process whereby electrons actually leave a odd element so the right option of course we can find that or we can use option d as a viable one so option d is good to go all right then we've come to the end of this video lesson but they are definitely equally important lessons to come up all you just need to do is to hit that like button for us also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get informed immediately we upload the next video content just for you